Can we, can we like clap? Let's do the clap again. Three, two, whatever. Clap, go. Hello, my beautiful and curious love bugs. Welcome back to another video by me, Nancy from Cybugs. I am an entomologist living in Ecuador. Normally I do ecotourism, but that's not a thing that's happening right now. 2020, am I right? So I'm doing entomology workshops. And I have headphones on today because I have a very special guest with us. His name is Joe Ballinger and I'll get to him in a second. So this video is actually a part of the Chemtails workshop right now. We are in the middle of talking about the diversification of venoms through different arthropod lineages. Chemtails is a workshop looking at insects and arthropods and their chemicals through the lens of their everyday lives. So. A couple of the spiders that we're talking about are the black widow, the brown recluse, and the Sydney funnel web spider. These spiders are considered very dangerous. They're like shrouded in myth and mystery and legends and everyone's grandmother was bitten by I don't know, one of them at one point in their lives, I'm sure. So today I wanted to bring my friend Joe Ballinger on. He is an amazing scientist. However, sometimes he doesn't make the best decisions like that time he got a black widow down his shirt. So today we're going to be talking to Joe about that experience, everything from what it felt like to the healthcare system and to what that venom is doing in your body. Without further ado, I'm going to introduce our special guest today, Joe Ballinger. Joe. Hi, I'm Joe. I am a, uh, a geneticist. I'm currently working at the University of Wyoming. So you said that you were a geneticist. Is that how you would characterize yourself in your scientific career? Yeah, um, I've always been really interested in the nuts and bolts of things, how things work. In graduate school, I studied how the parasitoid wasps evade the immune system, um, you know, the nuts and bolts of that. And here, uh, what we're trying to do is we are trying to um, connect the structure of the plants to the function. So, you know, sort of what the plants look like to what genes are involved. And hopefully that leads us uh, to this um, really, really uh, sought after and uh, kind of mysterious mechanism of yield loss from weeds. So how did you make that transition from parasitoids going into weeds? A lot of this revolves around agriculture. And I've always been um, interested in these sort of uh, chess games that we have to play with pests. And I kind of, um, one of the things that I've always wanted to do is I've always wanted to work on another model system because biologists use a whole bunch of different tools to solve problems and I was really attracted to the challenge of using um, these tools in a completely different system, uh, you know, sort of level up sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. I think a lot of people would be surprised. It's like, oh, I was working on insects and now I work on plants. It seems like a big jump, but. I mean, at, at some level, it's all the same thing. Genes are genes and chemicals are chemicals. Everything is chemicals, as I've said multiple times in this workshop. I think, I think like every video, I'm like, everything is chemicals. Yep. And uh, uh, this is just more proof of that. You can go from working on insects straight to plants, no problem. If you were not ever working with Black Widows, how exactly did you get one to bite you? Like, when was that? What were you doing? So most entomology departments have an insect zoo and they use these to show the public what insects look like and how they work because... And that they're not scary. <laughs> let's, let's put that one in there. They're not scary. They don't bite you for no reason. The reason why you need an insect zoo is because it's one thing to show people pictures of insects or dead specimens, but having one right up there is something completely different. It gives people an idea of the size, the motion and all that. And so you were working with the insect zoo that had black widows? Yeah, so we um, had just gotten a donation uh, of several black widows um, from someone who was clearing out a wood pile and didn't want to kill them. And I was showing them to my daughter and I kind of dropped one. 
And yeah, yeah, she still gives me crap for that. I didn't realize you were with your daughter when this happened. I thought, I thought you were by yourself. Well, I was, I was on a, um, a Skype call uh, with her. I honestly, to this day, have no idea where I dropped it, but somehow it ended up inside my shirt. Black Widows aren't particularly large. Um, the biggest females are really only about the size of a dime or a penny. And because they spend their entire lives on web on webs, they have very light feet. So, you know, if one's on you, you're not going to really be able to, to feel it. So you're talking to your daughter on Skype, you have this Black Widow that you're trying to show her and you drop it. Where do you drop it? Like, is it just, does it just like fall on the ground? Probably at least an hour to, half an hour to an hour. Um, this was about, what, 10 years ago now? So I don't really super kind of remember the exact time frame, but I never actually felt a bite. Um, instead, uh, uh, I found I felt a tickle on my shoulder, um, which uh, happened to be the spider. And as I um, just sort of reached back to figure out what the tickle was, my hand sort of slipped across my shoulder on a sweaty patch. And that's when I knew I'd been bitten. So how did you like associate this little sweaty patch on your shoulder with having been bitten. It, so it didn't hurt. It was just kind of like sweaty at first. Yeah, it didn't hurt. Um, and uh, when you work with these animals, you really have to know what the symptoms of envenomation are um, because you kind of want to get to a hospital before things get really bad. I, I thought that I could tough it out, and my doctor told me to um, go to a hospital, and my mom ended up calling me an ambulance uh, before I could call it myself. So you called your doctor, your doctor was like, go to the hospital, and you're like, nah, bro, I got this. There are certain things that are not nearly as bad as people said they were, and um, I just honestly thought that I could tough it out and that turned out to be a bad decision. I went out to drive to the hospital and I called my parents to tell them uh, what was happening and mostly not to worry and then my mom just sort of hung up on me and called an ambulance and I had one waiting for me as I left the building. I had planned on driving myself. I'm guessing it's a good thing that you didn't drive yourself? This is mostly a story of a uh, uh, why why you should take medical emergencies seriously because i did everything hilariously wrong <laughs> well i'm glad that this is a cautionary tale i am telling the story as honestly as i can because i did some really stupid stuff here and you need to know that all right kids don't try this at home and definitely don't do don't do what joe did i was able to walk into the ambulance and the ambulance was um maybe oh i don't know maybe a 10 to 15 minute ride and by the time i was at the hospital i was in the fetal position even though i didn't want to be it was a it was more comfortable than being laid out what black widow venom does is it binds to proteins on your nerve cells and creates these tunnels that allow calcium in. And it just sort of flips your nerve cells to the on position permanently and your muscles all just sort of tense up. So you don't really have any control of your muscles and it's really painful. It just, you know, if you've ever had a cramp when you, when you exercise, same thing, just every muscle in your body. <laughs> just, just everywhere. It is releasing a flood of neurotransmitters throughout your body. And the neurotransmitters are these things that your body uses to tell you to like move and stuff. So basically you have your neurons and then in between the, the two neurons, you have this like a little gap and the neurotransmitter is sent from one neuron to the other to be like, oh, I should fire, think. And so what this, um, what this venom is doing is it's just like flooding that communication system. So it jams the signals, which is why you just like crunch because you have all these neurotransmitters blocking up all of those neurons that should, should be open to receive signals, but now are not. So 
That's why Joe is like in a little fetal position and can't move. So I actually brought the spider with me, identified it for the doctors. Hold on, that is so important. If you do get bitten by a spider or any insect or really anything like ticks, spiders, down the list, always bring that animal with you to the doctor so that way they can run tests on you and it, especially in things like ticks that can carry diseases. And in this case, they were lucky enough to have an expert as a case. <laughs> I'm totally qualified to identify this thing, just not competent to handle it. I told them that um, I worked at the University of Georgia as a grad student, and I don't remember if I had my health insurance card on me or not, but um, I gave them my address and my contact information, and they wrote me down as homeless and unemployed and didn't bother writing down any of my contact info. <laughs> good, good, good. <laughs> All right. When they make antivenom, what they do is they inject it into a large animal like a horse and the antivenom will bind to the black widow venom in a way that keeps it from being able to latch on the nerve cells. It just sort of acts as a, a, a physical block. They have stopped using antivenom for black widow bites because it is an antibody, a part of the immune system of another animal it pretty frequently triggers immune reactions, uh, anaphylaxis. You have a pretty high chance of just dying from an allergic reaction to antivenom. There are treatments that are safer and just as effective. Throughout the years, they've researched different treatments on black widow bite victims, and what they have come up with is a mixture of muscle relaxants and painkillers the muscle relaxants will counteract the black widow venom by tickling the receptor of a different neurotransmitter that does the exact opposite thing. And then the painkillers are for the pain. This is a pretty uh, dangerous combination of medications if taken without supervision. What they'll do is they'll prescribe it at a high dose and just have somebody check on you every so often to make sure you're still breathing. <laughs> And, th and they did this to you at the, at the hospital that also claimed that you were homeless? Yep, yep. They put me on muscle relaxants and painkillers and had a doctor check on me every few minutes throughout the night to make sure I was still breathing. Did you get any sleep that night or did it just hurt so much? Like the painkillers help? Did you, were you like, didn't feel any pain? Did you still feel pain? Did you like not sleep? I was on painkillers and muscle relaxants. I honestly don't remember most of this. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> no, the next part of this story for the next 12 hours is mostly pieced together through conversations with friends, medical paperwork, and me just straight up going to the hospital and asking what happened. That must be kind of scary. Was that scary? If you don't remember it, it's not really scary. To like not know what happened to you for half a day? Losing 12 hours of your day is always a weird experience. Apparently since they had wrote me down as homeless and unemployed, their policy is to discharge you as soon as possible. So still high on the painkiller and muscle relaxant combo. Gave me a prescription for those two very dangerous drugs. That combo that they had, that you just said that you literally have to be monitored very carefully on because it's such a, a complicated and potentially dangerous mixture, that one. And sent me on my merry way. And by the way, uh, at this time, obviously not sober. My phone had died throughout the night so I had no way to call my friends or family and they would not help me charge my phone. This is also, I'm assuming, before Uber. This was before Uber. And even, even if Uber had been a thing, no phone. So I am assuming that I got onto the bus system. There was no direct line from that hospital to my apartment. So I am assuming that some of the bus drivers realized what was happening and helped me out. But the next thing that I remember was flopping down um, on a couch in my apartment complex's lobby. Well, uh, you, at least you made it to the right building. That's pretty impressive under that state. 
And there were about a dozen prospective tenants that I flopped down from. Obviously not okay. One of the uh, uh, hotel management people was like, hey, are you okay? To which I answered no. And I had them call my lab's undergrad at the time. And she came and filled my prescription, you know, just sort of made sure I was okay. I had plans with another friend that day. They called me to uh, uh, see, you know, why I had missed the plans. This was after my phone had charged. I told them what had happened and they're like, no, you shouldn't be alone right now. Come over. And they came and got me and... Good friends, good friends all around. Seems like you have some like excellent people helping you out. Yes, always make friends who are going to take care of you. Again, I don't remember much from this time period. In fact, I don't even know how long this time period was. Apparently at their home, they described me as a drugged up kitten. I was still in this sort of stage where I was cramping up and trying to go outside and trying to go on walks to ease the pain, even sort of going into these dysregulated seizures because as you come out of it, you know, your muscles aren't really controlled all that well because you're kind of in this violent back and forth. Eventually, they realized that I was still in a bad shape and called the university healthcare system who confirmed that I should have still been hospitalized. But yeah, it sounds like you should have still been hospitalized. I mean, I'm not a doctor, but <laughs> none of that sounds like you should have been out. They um, put me um, back in the hospital. The other hospital uh, kept me for at least another night or two. So this is a different hospital. This is a different hospital. This is a better hospital. They wrote my paper down uh, correctly. Excellent, excellent. They kept me throughout the night, uh, put me on the same combination of drugs, but um, also sedated me because I had not slept. A few days later, I sort of woke up very sore, very crampy, but otherwise lucid and not really in pain. Awesome. Did your So did your health insurance cover it? Yes, they did cover it, but I also had to fight off bill collectors while I was writing my dissertation, which is always fun. Some of the bills for things that I was charged with never actually got sent to me. They got sent straight to the bill collectors. The health insurance was actually really cool. They basically called off the dogs with the bill collectors. They just told me, if you're ever in this situation, have the health insurance company contact the bill collectors or the bill collectors contact the health insurance company you should absolutely not pay the bill collectors um, because that will negatively affect your credit score that's that's good advice sad that we need it in the united states but <laughs> great story but not anything i'd wish on anybody else well thank you for telling it i mean it's it's one of the best stories i have so it went viral on twitter did it not Honestly, it goes viral every time I tweet it. I should just tweet it again, just for the hell of it. Plug, shameless plug, follow Joe on Twitter, over up here, over here, up there somewhere. It'll pop up on screen. So it's important to note that this spider bit Joe out of self-defense and didn't bite Joe because it thought that it could eat Joe. So there's actually a whole bunch of different enzymes and different compounds that make up this cocktail of venom. Some of them are specifically targeted for insects and some of them are specifically targeted for crustaceans because some of their prey are actually crustaceans like little isopods. The black widow will have a bunch of different compounds in its overall venom cocktail to help it live its everyday life to capture prey and also help defend itself against blundering predators like Joe. So there's five different types of venom. Some of them work on insects, some of them work on beetles. They all have the same mechanism of action because insect nerves and human nerves work very much the same. The reason why it has activity on mammals is likely because if you have a mouse that's messing with you, you want that mouse dead as soon as possible. The venom of black widows certainly allows it to defend itself against larger prey, up to and including even though black widows can sometimes catch small vertebrates as prey that is not normally on their list and joe is obviously too big for a black widow and a black widow would know that so i think it's important to talk about how common or not common black widow bites are in general 
black widows are web building spiders and they'll spend their entire lives on that web they'll just stake out on their own find a nice spot and unless something really drastic happens to that area they'll just spend their entire lives in that web the web has to be disrupted the spider has to be essentially out in the open territory which they're really not adapted to do you can see that they're really just completely unwieldy um, outside of the outside of the web and thomas shahan has a video of him like holding one and it's like trying to like walk across i'll like put a small clip in here as well about that and it's like really super awkward on the ground like it's, it's not built to to be outside of its web which is why its venom needs to be so fast because if you look at how small that spider is in comparison even to some of its insect prey it's catching that it needs a mechanism to take it down quickly and since it can't rely on its strength and if it catches like a wasp or something like that the wasp could sting the spider and do a lot of damage to the spider and do a lot of damage to the web so that spider this black widow being so small needs to have a way to incapacitate its prey really quickly to not sustain damage to itself or its house nobody's died of a black widow bite for like 60 years. They are something that's very, very serious. You should absolutely go to the hospital. Uh, don't think you can tough it out. In fact, one thing that I should mention is by the time I got to the hospital, I had to be put on oxygen. Wow. Black Widow venom specifically makes you go into cardiac and respiratory failure. So because it's blocking all those neurotransmitters and stopping your muscles, it's technically a neurotoxic protein affecting your nervous system. So they're not going to seek you out and bite you. They're just something that needs to be respected. If you're wondering whatever became of this spider, I named her Nancy after a good friend of mine at the time in grad school. Oh. Oh, I wonder who that could be. And she lived out the rest of her natural life in captivity. She died a couple days after my successful thesis defense. Aw, she was like a little token of your, your grad school. <laughs> if you like Joe, we can invite him back. So leave us a comment below and say hi to Joe and say how much you liked him being here and sharing his story. Check out Nature Check, which is the D&D &D game that Nancy and I both play on, and Ask an Entomologist, which is the science communication project that Nancy and I collaborate on. Follow us on Twitter at bug questions. And if you want to follow my personal account, it is at stylopidae. And that will all be in the description because that was a lot to pop up on screen <laughs> during this whole thing. But you can find Joe in all of those spaces and he does amazing work. And I've loved collaborating with him on Ask an Entomologist for seven years now. That's it for me, love bugs, and I will see you all next week with another video, actually another interview. How exciting. <laughs> and the week after that with another interview. This is like, I don't know, Marvel MCU universe phase of interviews. If you like this kind of style of video, if you like the interviews, uh, feel free to say that in the comments or in the thought box so that way I know to keep doing them and inviting cool people to spend their Thursday nights with me <laughs> attached to their technology for an hour or two. <laughs> well, love bugs, that's it for me. And I think that's it from Joe as well. So we will see you next week. Bye.